Feed roller maintenance is one of those maintenances that you may choose to do when they pop up or you may want to do it about every quarter. It kind of depends on how you run. Um, if you want access to those before the timers pop up, you want to go into the software to get that. To access those, go to Tools and Settings and Timers. And then we're going to be looking at feed rollers. So if I click on this, you can see um, this machine's not run very much since the maintenance was done. Um, you can step through individual or you can step all. Please follow all the maintenance procedures carefully and apply the proper amounts of the specified lubrication during each step. Melco is not going to be held responsible if you're not doing this. Go ahead and hit next. So now we'll be doing the feed roller lubrication uh, and cleaning. So that's all of these guys up here. One of the first steps is to lift all the pinch rollers. So I'm just going to place my thumb here and lift. I'm going to do this with all of them. Now something that I will do is I will come in underneath and I will pull all of these threads and I will tie them together. And what that does is as I'm working up here and moving things around, I'm not going to be unthreading any of my needles. So it's just kind of a handy thing that I do. It's not in the instructions, but it does make my life a little bit easier. Um, so what I tend to do is lift all of the pinch rollers, pull a good amount of thread through, and then tie it in a knot down here so that as I'm moving around up here, I'm not unthreading my needles. Hit next. Now I need to remove the thread feed front covers. That's these little black covers. Uh, one thing that I find incredibly helpful is to move these threads up and between the rollers and out of the way. I tend to do half to one side and half to the other. To remove these covers, take a small flat blade screwdriver and just lift. Now they do overlap. You can also use your fingernail. They do overlap. They work a little bit like shingles. So if you lift one and the others tend to come with it, that's why. See how all these are starting to come with it? And then you just pull them out and they are not in any sequence, they can go back on any needle. So don't stress if you're trying to get needle seven's cover back on needle seven, I wouldn't worry about it. Now there is, as I'm doing this, there is a little ridge right here. And that does, you'll, you'll deal with it more putting it back in. Um, sit right in the back, but you can lift and then pull to get it out of there. And if you try to do this without a video camera in front of you, it's a lot easier. All right, click next. Now I need to remove the thread feed rollers. In your operator's kit, you'll get a tool. It looks like a little ring with a little hook on it. And that's what this tool is for. So you can take the tool, line it up on the edge of a roller, rotate 90 degrees, and then pull. And if you pull out at a 45 degree angle from the front of the machine, it makes it a lot easier to do. You can just reach in, grab this, and pull it out. If for some reason you don't have that tool, you've lost it or you can't find it, you can always order another one. Um, but if you have two small flat blade screwdrivers, you can do the same thing. You just go in on either side and pry it out. But if you aim towards the middle of this curve, you're going to be better. And if you aim at a 45 degree angle from the front of the machine coming out, it's going to be easier. And then I can just roll that out. As you're doing this, be careful when you grab them not to get grease on this surface. Notice that these have spokes on them. 
If you're using the tool, you'll have to get around one of the spokes before you can pull. If you're using the screwdrivers, you'll have to get in between them before you can pull. Click Next. So now we've got a zoomed in view of where those rollers are and we need to clean out where the hub on those rollers rests. So I've got you kind of panned over to one side. We'll come in, clean this area out. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side, which is a little bit harder to see. We're just gonna clean this area out. So we get in there, right where that hub rests, clean that out. Make sure you're not leaving little bits behind of cotton swabs, if that's what you're using. That's why we suggest a, a lint-free cloth. And you can wrap that around your uh, applicator stick, and that really helps with that. Click Next. Here I have my rollers laid out on a paper towel. Uh, we need to clean them as well. We just cleaned where they go, but now we need to clean these hubs. So I'm just going to use a cotton swab, making sure that I don't leave any lint behind. Clean around there. I'm gonna rotate this around. Do the same thing on the other side. Cleaning off the old grease and any lint. Making sure that as I do so, I don't get any grease on that thread feed surface. And go ahead and do that with the rest of them. As you're cleaning these rollers, uh, be sure to inspect for any wear, nicks, grooves, or anything that may catch thread. And if the roller is damaged, go ahead and replace it with a new one. Okay, that's my last one. Click Next. So now that we've cleaned these, we need to reapply grease. I'm gonna use the EMB polymer grease, and I wanna apply it to the side of the hub, and I'm gonna do a few dots, three small dots kind of evenly around in a little triangle. And what I'll do is I'll squeeze a little bit out and then I will scrape it off onto the side like that. So it's not on this face, it's on here. And that was a bit much. Click next. So I'm gonna go a little bit less on this side, uh, a little bit less over here. And then I'm gonna flip the roller. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. One, two, three, something like that. So it's scraped off onto the side, just like that. Click Next. So now we need to reinstall the thread feed roller. And if you look inside of here, you'll see a gear. They line up gear to gear, and what I'll typically do is line them up as best I can, and then I will roll it in by rolling on the pinch roller here to help push it into place, and then you can snap it into place. I typically will grease a roller, insert it, grease a roller, insert it. I don't try to do all 16 and then do all 16. It's one and then the next, one and then the next. So again, I hold, rock into place, and I use the pinch roller to roll it forward into place, and then press down. If you end up with a little bit of grease on the divider, go ahead and clean that up. Click Next. So now we need to reinstall those covers. And because of the way that they overlap, I find it easiest to do from needle 1 to needle 16. Uh, easiest thing for me to do is to hold it at the bottom, slide it up, Feel it rock into place and then rock forward. So we're looking for this groove to hit right under there. So I'm going to slide that up, rock into place, and push down to have it snap into place. And you'll continue with all 16. Remember that these can go back in any order. You don't have to match them up needle to needle. Now, because of this little bit of plastic right there, I find it easier to put in needle 16 before 15. I find that the two play better against each other than they do against the side of the machine. So that makes my life a little bit easier. So I go needle one through 14, 
and then 16, and then 15, just to make it easier to get everybody to line up and play nice. Click Next. So now we need to take care of the pinch rollers. So we need to remove them. Uh, when I do this, I find it easiest to put my thumb on the lever for one and then pull straight off to the side till it stops. And then I tend to put the one next to it down so that it rocks over at an angle and then I can just pull it straight out from the machine that way. And I may do every other one and then come back and do them because it's faster for me. But if you want, you can do them all. These do have a bit of flex. You may have to pull them a little bit to get it out of the way for yourself. I'm just setting those rollers on a paper towel. So I'm going to continue on with all 16. Again, I want to be careful as I'm doing this that I do not get grease on the pinch surface of the roller. Now pinch roller number one is a little bit more of a challenge because you've got the side of the machine to deal with. You just have to pull a little bit harder and then also come down a little bit more instead of straight out since you can't rock. Um, this does have a good amount of flex. I don't want to pull it so hard that I'm going to break it, um, but it does have a good amount of flex so that I can slide this in and out of place. But again, kind of coming down and rocking out is a much easier way for me to do that. Click Next. And now I want to clean the hubs, the roller hubs. So I'm going to come around. And this is one where I tend to do all the odds and then all the evens. So I put every other one down and that just makes it a little bit easier for me to get to these. So once I'm done with all the odds, I'll put them down and put the other ones up to make them easier to get to. You can do this any way you like as long as you're getting them clean. Click Next. Now that we've cleaned the machine, we're going to clean the rollers. So I'm just going to come in, pick this guy up, and clean any lint out of here. I also want to make sure that as I'm looking at these, that if any of these three little feet are broken, I may want to replace my roller. I'm going to go ahead and clean all 16, being careful not to get any grease on the pinch surface, so the surface that touches the thread. As I'm cleaning these, I'm also inspecting them for damage. Click Next. So now I need to grease the lever hub. I'm going to use that EMB polymer grease from the operator's kit. And I tend to do every other one and grease the rollers and then install them and then go back and do the others. You can do one at a time. You can do whatever works best for you. But I'm going to apply a small amount of that EMB polymer grease to the top portion. Something like that. I'm just going to scrape that off and I've got every other one down because I find that's easier for me. You want it on the outside of that hub. Click Next. So now we're going to grease the pinch rollers and I'm going to use that EMB polymer grease and apply a tiny amount of grease to the outer surface of one of those three little pegs, those three little feet. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to put a little bit and scrape it off on the outside of that foot like that. That's what I'm looking for. I'll do it again. A little bit just on the outside of that foot. Click Next. Now we need to reinstall those pinch rollers. So I've got a little bit of grease on the hub. I've got a little bit of grease on the outer edge of one of those feet. So I will pull, rotate, and then come back into place. And as I do, I'll roll it slightly, start to spread that grease, and then I will grab it and snap it into place. I'll go ahead and put that one down to get it out of my way to make it easier to do the next one. I'm not lining up the thread. I'm not doing any of that yet. Go ahead and spread that grease a little bit, snap it into place. I'm going to go ahead and do that with the rest of my pinch rollers. So here again, needle one is a little bit more difficult. I come in from underneath, rotate, snap into place. 
So now because I moved the thread all out of the way, I'm going to line all of this up. And to do that, I kind of lift this thread back around, line it up around each of those pin trollers. You go one more, there you go. And then from the other side. All right, and then I tend to pull extra thread through a little bit just to make sure that everything's pulling correctly, that if I got grease on any of the thread, it's not going to be on anything that I sew with. Click next. And now I will go across and make sure that everything lines up. And I will put those pinch rollers down. Click next. And now that you're finished with this, you can go ahead and click finish. And then you can exit. If there's any other maintenance you want to do while you're in the screen, you can go ahead and do that or you can click OK to get out of it. Now that I've closed out of all the maintenance screens, um, I still have this extra thread hanging. So what I'm going to do, because I, I pulled it all through the system, made sure I didn't have anything um, with grease on it or made sure everything was flowing the way that it should have been. I have extra, I'm going to use the grabber and the center key on the, on the keypad. It's gonna close that grabber. That gives me a nice place to cut against, figure out about how far I want. I want, you know, a centimeter below that. I'm gonna go ahead and trim up my threads. It's one of the few times you'll see me actually using a full pair of scissors to cut thread. If I'm cutting a bunch of them, I'll just cut straight across. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open that back up. And now I'm ready to continue on with my day.